In science, we gather lots of data, and often it's quantitative data. Numbers. But we have to find a way to make these numbers meaningful. One way to do that is to calculate the mean. Mean in math and science doesn't refer to the emotion. It's a calculation of the average. So let's calculate the mean for a set of data like this, which is the height of seedlings in centimeters. Again, the mean is just another way of saying the average. To find the mean, you take the sum of all the numbers and divide by the number of items in the collection. So you'll add up four, six, four and a half, and seven, and divide by four because there were four numbers. And you get 5.375. At this point, you could choose to round the answer. I'm gonna use my knowledge of significant figures and round this to the nearest whole number, and that's five. Now imagine that you took a test and your teacher told you that you did pretty good, or that your answers were close to correct, or that you were near enough to the grade you wanted. You'd probably be really annoyed with how vague this is. It's easier to know how you performed on a test if your teacher says you missed 6% and had a 94% total on the test. Those numbers are more informative and specific. For similar reasons, we use percent error to calculate how close our data came to a known value. Percent error is a useful tool for determining the precision of your experiment and calculations compared to a known value. It will compare the data from your experiment to the data that the scientific community agrees upon and accepts as true. It's calculated by taking the absolute value of the experimental data minus the accepted value and then divided by the accepted value. If you multiply by 100, you'll get a percentage. Remember, absolute value means that you ignore negative symbols. Let's try a calculation. While doing a lab, a student found the density of a piece of pure aluminum to be 2.85 grams per cubic centimeter. The accepted value for the density of aluminum is 2.70 grams per cubic centimeter. What is the student's percent error? The number that the student found from their own experiment is the experimental value. The accepted value for the density of aluminum can be found with a web search or in a book of chemical properties. Plug in the data, multiply by 100, and you get 5.5 repeating, which you can round to 5.56%. This means the student was off by 5.56%, which isn't too bad, but the smaller the percentage, the better the lab technique must be. Zero would be perfect. Let's look at another set of data. Seven teams measured an object with a ruler, but came up with different answers. What is the mean? We'll add up all the numbers and divide by seven, because there are seven groups and you get 2.687. Let's keep it to three digits and round to 2.69. What's the percent error if the actual measurement was 2.78 centimeters? We'll take the mean and use it as our experimental value and 2.78 as the accepted value. Multiply by 100 and you get 3.2%, which is okay. But remember, closer to zero is better. Now sometimes when you graph data, you'll get something called a normal distribution or normal curve that looks sort of like a bell. This is a curve showing test scores. There are lots of people near the average, and a few people who did worse, and a few who did better than average. Sometimes, most people are in the average, and very few are the outliers. Other times, the curve is flattened, and there are a lot more people who are away from the average. This is standard deviation. It's the amount of variation or dispersion from the average. So let's look at the bell curve again and think about why it's helpful to understand standard deviation. Here's a normal curve in orange. A curve with a high, narrow peak has a low standard deviation, which means that the data is very precise and accurate. A curve with a flattened peak has a high standard deviation, and that means that the data is not very precise or accurate. This can help you analyze the quality of your data. Thank you for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.